How's it going everybody? Peyton here and welcome to World of Warships. Today I am looking at the Kunigsberg, which is a German Tier 5 light cruiser. Today I will be talking a little bit about and now some modifications and some gameplay about this ship and how it performs in battles. So stay tuned for that and let's get started. So Kunigsberg you can find in the German Tech 3 line well, it's only one line for now. The battleships are coming soon in the next patch. And it's found right here at tier uh, 5. And its next, well, its predecessor, Karlush, was was an interesting ship, I must say. I, I liked playing that ship and it was really entertaining. But I like this ship a lot more. So let's get through some stats. So, survivability. This ship it's not very well armored and it's not the most I know by hit points the most uh, strong ship. So, but hit points I put it on the third place. The only ship that uh, accelerated in the hit points is the Kirov and Furtakam, which are heavy cruisers. Well, the Kirov is not a heavy cruiser, but it's a medium cruiser, let's say. And the armor is from 10 to 50 millimeters, so. Um, you're pretty much like paper thin armor, so don't expect much of ricochets. So artillery is something special on this ship. It has three turrets and three guns inside, and they are all 150 millimeter guns. And what it makes this uh, uh, gun so so special is the rate of fire. This ship has 7.5 real time on each uh, gun, so it means that it will be pumping those shots out like dinner. So. Um, you get some high uh, uh, rate of fire on this ship, which is the most uh, biggest advantage on this ship. But another big advantage uh, on this ship is the ra uh, range on the guns, because it has 16.5 kilometer range on these guns. The mm, only ship that can actually reach this range of the guns is the mighty Kirov, which has a little bit less. It's six the six. 16.3 kilometers, uh, which is uh, to 0.2 kilometers less, but uh, this the Kiro has a bigger uh, damage per minute, but uh, it has a longer reload time. Now the Koningsberg, it has a very fast reload time, as I said, and it can pop out the shots really fast. So if you're shot, shooting a high explosive enemy, you're gonna be constantly keeping them on fire. Secondary armament, well, it's only how many, three of these guns, the dual double flak 88mm anti-aircraft guns, which are dual purposed. So, the next thing is that this ship has a really good thing is the torpedoes. It has four times three tr triple torpedo launches, as you might call it, and these torpedoes do damage. They really don't do 15,000 damage per torpedo, but it's still 6 torpedoes on each side of the ship. You can sink even the battleship with one broad side of torpedoes. So, this is the part of the ship that I really, really like, the fact that it has torpedoes. It has self-defense. The torpedoes have a kilometer range of 6 kilometers, and they are quite fast. They go 60, 40, 64 knots per hour, I guess. And it's it's nice. It's, it's the range and speed that makes this torpedoes the most deadliest. So, the next thing, uh, let's take a look, is the anti-aircraft armament. Um, it's self-defense, as I said, in pretty much uh, the to tier 5, pretty much every ship has only for its self-defense uh, purposes. So we have some machine guns, uh, four machine guns, this type, and then we have some double flag, 30mm, 37mm, uh, anti-aircraft armament and then the good old 88mm flag guns on the three double turrets. So it's not anything major but it has there, it's there. Now the maneuverability of this ship is it's great. I like the maneuverability of this ship. Now the maximum speed of this ship is 23.5 knots which is not the best but it uh, does the job well right. So the turning circus radius, it will turn in 680 meters, so it's not bad. The rate shift time is 6.9 seconds, which you can improve by some concealments, but for me it's just enough, it just works enough, because the ship is sleek and you can dodge your shots really, really easy. Now the concealment on this ship, it's not the best, because it has a very long range gun, so it needs to 
balance the things out so it's 12.4 kilometer sea detectability range and by there it's gonna be spotted from 6.4 kilometers so you have you don't have the best concealment but you can make some good use of that because you have the 16 0.5 km range on those guns, so you have very big amounts of uh, space to work with. So, one thing that I should point out about this ship is the last two turrets. The both are eccentrically mounted, so one is a bit, I don't know, 5 meters to the left, and the other one is 5 meters to the right, so um, you cannot point always all three turrets at the target, so one time you're gonna be pointing these three turrets on the right side and once you're gonna be pointing these two turrets on the left side so you're not gonna be always pointing the maximum amounts of guns on the enemy now the modules for these ships are pretty much simple uh, we have two modules to, for upgrade so we have one fire control system upgrade which increases your range of guns main your battery guns by 10% so it means we get from 15 kilometers to 16.5 kilometers uh, range upgrade now the whole upgrade is only pretty much the 7700 um, hit point upgrade and you get one more secondary point upgrade and one uh, three points more in the anti-aircraft armament and another thing that is yeah it has the ship is the fighter plane which is uh, used to take down the enemy dive bombers and fighter bombers and the law etc it's the self-defense against the aircraft uh, mm, it covers the little bit more of the I don't know the lack of the anti-aircraft armor in the ship but uh, okay it does lack but it's not that bad so uh, enough talking let's get into some gameplays guys shall we and welcome to gameplay guys now we are on the fault line and I am joining the assault on the sea line so this was a really really tense game you're gonna see why because it starts slowly but then it just BAM it just hits you and it's gonna be really really interesting I get some torpedo kills but that's pretty much it so it's gonna be interesting so here we have the enemy Nicholas class destroyer and this ship is really really good at destroying the destroyers because the rate of fire and the HE work so well on this ship it's just amazing so I'm trying to get to the position on the enemy destroyer as he posts smo uh, pop smoke on the water so I now have to get closer or the my ally Clemson destroyer has to spot him so he's dropping torpedoes he's gonna try to sweep him out of the smoke I'm gonna try to push in and try to support him with a cap. I have put up the fighter and I just put uh, activated the aquatic search to see if any torpedoes are coming for me. So I'm approaching. I'm gonna start trying to cap now. And the ship, as I said, is really sleek, so you have quite an well, you have quite a big chance of dodging the enemy torpedoes, as it has really, really high maneuverability and speed. It's really capable, and something is returning fire, and I am detected, and there is it, this. So one of the torpedoes from the Clemson hit him, and I start returning fire, and there are his torpedoes, so. And I'm taking fire from something else there. So he took the flooding, the Nicholas is out, but I'm taking a little bit more fire from than it, it meant for destroy. And there it is, the mighty Japanese tier 5 cruiser for tackle. That thing is a beast. It has 6,000 more hit points, and there is hell. It's Kuma and Kuningsbergs, and both are going really, really fast in my direction. And then I start looking at those guys, why are they so rushing? Why are they rushing so much in? And... Oh, that just messed up. And... As you can see, the Kuningsberg just uh, hit the ground, and there are some torpedoes. And I just set him on fire, and that Kuma is trying to flank me, and he's gonna be trying to drop torpedoes. Now my aquatic search is still active, so I can see the torpedoes as soon as they are in the water. And there it comes. Here comes torpedoes from the Kuma, and I start activating my torpedo tubes. And here comes the first torpedo tube for him. And then I say, this should kill him, right? And then I launch the other two tor the torpedo tubes from the left side. And this is looking good. Oh, the Kuma was missed, but I have still the second torpedo tube. I launched that tube, and the torpedo hits on the uh, Kuningsberg, and same time on the Kuma. 
And we shut down uh, fighter plane, so this is nice. But there comes hell. Here comes the Miyoki. And this ship is so badly armored that if we get hit, ooh, we are a world of pain. And here comes the Frotalka, which has 200 free millimeter guns, which are deadly against the cruisers. So especially my type. As you can see, they are just chewing me up. And I said, well, this is gonna be a fast game. And I start taking hits, I am burning in all places. I just put out the fire actually now. And I said, let's get behind this island just to make sure I'm not under fire by Frutaka. And I see that the Ally Kuma is joining to support me. And I'm, I start seeing that it's a little bit foggy around here. So I say, this must be the smoke screen. So let's get in. And I say, okay, let's get the, in between those islands and let's get it in the car from those two ships. And I'm sailing. And I'm gonna start returning some fire against that Miyogi. As that Clemson was really, really brave that he went after the Miyogi. But he would never catch him because Miyogi is so fast and so maneuverable that he easily would dodge his torpedoes. And I start returning fire. And the Furutaka has also concentrated fire on that Clemson. So, for the honorable country. And. I start taking a um, fire back from the Miyogi and I dodge all the four shells. As you can see this ship is really really nice to maneuver. It has nice maneuverability, it's nice and sleek, it has nice top speed, you can easily dodge torpedoes with it. Now, the only downside to this ship as I said it's pretty much the armor so I say you can play this ship aggressive as I play it <laughs> usually and or you can play it far back sniper. Because here we go, some incapacitations on that Furtaka. Because this ship has 16.5 km range, so you can play at long range sniper or you can play it as a um, kamikaze ship, actually, a uh, suicide sh ship. Which usually is more entertaining than sniper. And uh, I don't know, this is my preferred option of playing this ship, but. I would suggest you, if you are more cautious player, just play behind some battleships. They take all the damage, and you just dish out all the damage. So that Clemson fought bravely and died for the great American lands, and my fighter just came back. And now I said, okay, I see that Kong right there, so I'm gonna try to support him because he is still full health. So we can probably take out that Miyogi pretty easy. And that's for Taka, because Congo, that ship does the damage like it's breakfast. And uh, I said, that milk is going directly between these islands. And I said, should I stop or should I go? And I said, fuck this, let's go in. Let's go balls deep into the problem. And that Kuma is dropping some torpedoes to try to stop the Miyogi. And I'm just... We're going around this corner as the mighty Furutaka still appears and I'm still going right right for the hell and I'm starting to uh, put down some fire on that Miyogi as he is not putting much attention on me and let's see what we can do and this camera is a bit glitchy and here we set them on fire the, this ship is quite capable of uh, keeping the ships on fire and as, as I see that he is pointing the guns back at me I straighten out the ship in the front of him so, I, so it, he has the least amount of space to hit me and here comes the shells and all shells miss so I pulled up the throttle to the full speed and I say let's get behind this island and let's support that to Congo so here comes the Furtuka, Furutaka st steaming right into us so I said let them fight as I am meanwhile returning fire, and here comes some fire back from the Furutaka. And he missed all ships. All uh, the ship. So I'm slowly sailing. And the game is quite close now, pretty much, because we, uh, well, we control all three points, but the ships are pretty much even. We, pretty much, we have two battleships, two the cruisers, and one cru carrier, so it's pretty much uh, close battle, but uh, we have the points advantage. So. But the things are gonna get a little bit more tricky, as you're gonna see. The Furutaka is streaming right, right in. He has no fear, he's gonna die for the honorable Japanese land. Japan. Royal Jap. And I started returning the fire to him, 
and the uh, shots ricochet and I start uh, returning f um, getting fire and that was a close hit if one more of those shots hit I would be underwater I was thought man I'm done for sure this time and uh, I still keep returning fire and this is the thing about this ship this ship is running ship so this ship is more powerful when it's uh, retreating and running back because both of the main turrets are back uh, the ship and you can still keep firing with the enemy and keep uh, maneuvering and getting away from the ship that's the tactics of the running ship pretty much you are running away from the enemy returning fire and maneuvering every shot so as you're gonna see and yeah I just realized in that point that the Furutak I just knew what the Furutak is gonna do he's gonna drop the torpedoes on that Kuma but I didn't realize that the uh, carrier had an eye on him so he took some uh, torpedoes from the carrier and any second now here we go the Furutaka's torpedoes are in the water and Kongo was down just as that so I set the Furutaka on fire but he takes it out and I'm still returning fire to the Furutaka and pretty much the thing is that for the next couple of five minutes I was just running and dodging shots so I think he, yep here comes the shots and I see them and I slowly maneuver the ship out because you don't want to maneuver too much otherwise the front of the beak of the ship is gonna stick out and it's gonna be hit you, you need a little tappy tap nice tappy taps to maneuver the ship out of the shots so I'm returning fire he's returning fire but he's gonna hit I hit and he also hits that was uh, another lucky shot if that penetrated I would be dead but it probably or penetrate and I'm returning fire he is on fire and that was the game guys so I hope you uh, now seen some things or figured out I uh, hope I told you some things about this ship it's a really really nice ship I really enjoy when I'm playing it the next thing that is coming is the Lumberg which is gonna be a lot more interesting ship as it's looks a lot different and it has a lot more firepower and has defensive cooldown so this is gonna be a very effective against those pesky planes that are bombing me always so yeah this ship uh, I must say it's for I don't know for cautious players or for those who are really daring as me so I don't know uh, I would suggest it to people that as I said it's cautious and I don't know it's pretty much all around good ship. It has the firepower, it has torpedoes, it has substantially quite enough good amount of hit points. And I don't know. This is gonna be probably current for this uh, review actually. So I hope you guys enjoyed the review. Leave a like, comment down below. And I'm bringing a little bit special episode in the next week. So I hope you stick to that and see the episode. So. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, leave a comment, uh, what the heck I said this, so until next time guys, bye bye.